Well, good day there. Welcome back to the channel. Well, I've been having a really good time here crafting on my studio table. So a couple videos ago, we covered uh, a review of my sketch journaling from the last year, 2022. And then we've also covered a little bit of ideas I have for making your own homemade notebooks. You saw that in the last video, the world-changing idea of staggering the page length so you can flip through them easier. Yes, that was quite remarkable. But all of this has been inspired by our friend Ted Monk, who is very instrumental in the typewriter community. He's the creator of the typewriter database. Check out his website. I'll leave a link down below. Ted has been working for the last few weeks on this idea of making everyday carry notebooks that use reclosable prong fasteners so you can unbind your notebook and add and remove pages, reorder things, customize it at will. Uh, I've been really interested in following his progress and I got interested enough that I decided I wanted to order some of my own prong fasteners and try my hand at what I could do with it. So I ordered some Aco prong fasteners off of Amazon and hearken, I just now heard, yes, the Amazon delivery guy. So I've been waiting for this shipment to arrive from Amazon all day. Well, you only get like 50 sets of fasteners per box. And oh, by the way, if you are looking for these online, just be aware that they also sell just the top part of the fastener. Like the fastener comes in two pieces, the bendy part and then the part that slips over the bendy parts. They sell just the top parts. Why would you need that? So make sure if you do buy these, you get the whole set, both pieces. Anyway, these have a spacing, a whole spacing of two and three quarter inches. It looks like it's a pretty good size for a pocket size notebook. And I'm excited about maybe putting them to use and seeing if I can quickly make a little thrown together notebook out of just some junk scrap materials laying around my studio. Prong fasteners for making notebooks that you can unbind and reorder the pages at will. Thank you, Ted, for the idea. Well, okay, so with a, a scrap of cardboard and some paper I cut, this is three and a half by five and a half inches, which is some metric value in the rest of the world. I've bound up just a few of these pages between these cardboard covers. And the first thing I notice is obviously it's gonna need some kind of a way to spread open the pages better. And so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the covers. I mean, I'm using stiff cardboard, right? So it probably is better with flexible cover material, but if you're using stiff cardboard, I think the right way to do this is to cut it with a trimmer, razor knife or whatever, and then tape it with gaffer's tape. And make sure you use the genuine gaffer's tape, not the fake gaffer's tape. So that's probably the best way to do it with a hard cover. And I probably will only do the front because the back one will stay rigid so it becomes like a surface against which you can write, right? Like a writing pad. You don't want the back hinging floppy back, but you want the front to open up. So the way these unfasten is you slide the little loops. You spread the first tine. You slide the loops back the other way. The second tine, the top part of the binder slips off of the tines and then our cover comes off and now I can go slice up this cover and tape it with some gaffer's tape and maybe think about decorating it also. So in lieu of actually measuring this the right way, uh, I'm just going to mark it. I'm going to eyeball it 
and it's only as straight as you can manage to drag the razor knife across it numerous times and plus I need to remind you that there's no such thing as a perfectly straight line it's a mathematical construct only but not in the real world okay there we are okay so the Joe Van Cleave approved gaffers tape is pro gaff and it comes in various widths I happen to have two inch wide we should probably be using narrower than two inches but you get what you get and you don't throw a fit about halfway on the tape okay and we will just slap that down and I will center this on to make it even with the other side keeping in mind that it's only approximate there's no perfect anything in the physical world so that should take a lot of stress off you perfectionist artists and craftspeople out there who think that it has to be perfect perfect is a imaginary construct okay so cutting these guys I could probably fold this over to make a little bit of reinforcement okay there's a nice hingy hingy hinge and now I just need to repunch my holes all right but it looks like I should stagger these pages so I can open them easier that's actually not bad not bad at all. A nice hard surface to write against. I just need to cut more paper. And then I need to decorate this. And maybe, maybe trim the corners as well. So now I need to hole punch these to fit them in here. And if you've done this correctly, you should have chads all over your work table. If you don't have them all over your work table, in fact, it looks like the Japanese game of Go and white is winning. Now, I'm thinking about metal fatigue right now. I don't know how you're feeling, but I'm feeling various thoughts about metal fatigue and the bending of the prongs back and forth as you open and close it. But it's possible the prongs may break if you bend it too much, but this is why you buy the 50 count box of prong fasteners so that if you do wear them out, you have more prongs. Prong Fest, that's right, January is National Prong Fest Month. And uh, make sure, again, your loops are on the outside. Okay, and make sure those are straight, there we go. All right, so one of the good rules about decorating things in these kinds of projects is that old magazines are your friend. That's right, old magazines, illustrations, you can cut out junk mail flyers, old calendars, whatever are very, very handy. Uh, stretch it over there. Okay. Yeah, so this is the uh, poor man's laminator, is what I call it, which is uh, two inch wide packing tape, and you want to get plenty of excess, line it up on one edge, and then Get your cardboard scraper out and uh, spread it like that. This is actually not two inches, I, need, I notice. We have a little bit here, not covered, but you know, it'll be fine. Try to conform to the cardboard cover and the rounded corners. Well, there you go. 
it's a little bit protected. All right, so here's our front cover, inside front cover, some New Mexico art themed decor. Pretty nice, I like it. Okay, so cardboard cover, hinged on the front. I can write on this very easily. I can take the pages out, reorder them, add different kinds of paper, dividers, whatever I want to do. This is just scratching the surface of what's possible with prong fastener everyday carry notebooks, thanks to Ted Monk. Well, it's uh, Prong Fest 2023. That's right. Prong Fastener notebooks are now the in thing. If you guys aren't in on the Prong Fastener bandwagon, you're just behind the times. But before we close today, I'd like to just review some of the other reusable notebook ideas. Reusable meaning you can rebind them easily. I've dabbled with a few of these other ideas in the past. So one of the methods of uh, binding notebooks that I've been using that enables you to reconfigure the notebook are these uh, ring binders. These particular ones I get at Staples. I think they're called Circa if I'm not mistaken. I have a little bookmark here for my current place in the notebook. It just pulls out and these uh, holes are like a half circle with a little slot that goes out to the edge. And so you can just insert them, pull them out and everything. This particular book has been my video production log book that goes back a few years. But anyway, you can get these punches. There's a, a cheaper punch that just kind of goes in the binding of the book, but you can get the more expensive kind here, the 365 that does that kind of punching. And those are kind of nice, but the problem I, that I have with this kind of binding system is the rings are just really big. And if you have a thin book, especially a small one, the rings are just oversized and it's just not very convenient. So one of the other reusable, reconfigurable notebooks that goes back probably further than many of them is the Franklin. Used to be called Franklin Covey. Franklin Day Planners. This is before the era of the smartphone, back when PDAs were just coming online in the 1990s. But businesses use these a lot. Franklin Day Planners, and they, Filofax was one brand name, and they are reconfigurable. They have six rings, two sets of three. They have all kinds of accessory dividers, add-ins, ways to configure your book, like different kinds of papers that are already pre-punched, different accessories that go in the book, like the, the ruler here, the scale, and then you even have the hole punch. So you can punch individual sheets of paper. Someone gives you a handout from a meeting at work or whatever, punch it, and now it's part of your system. So it's a pretty cool system, but these have been around for decades. These probably preceded a lot of the newer systems of notebooking. The method of binding that I really enjoyed started out as what people call the hipster PDA. So this is back in the 90s, early 2000s, when personal digital assistants, this is before the era of smartphones, personal digital assistants like Palm Pilots and Windows portable machines were available. And somebody, I think it was Merlin Mann, came up with the idea of a paper-based alternative to a personal digital assistant. You could call it di personal digital assistant, digital meaning fingers. But the idea is to hole punch one hole in the top of a stack of index cards and use these ring binders and stick them in your back pocket. This was one of them that I actually used and I made it out of this aluminum flashing that you get at the hardware store. I put some strapping tape on the edges so the edges weren't so sharp. And this was a front and back cover that's bound that way, nice and durable. It'll bend, you can go in your back pocket. It's moisture resistant for back pocket moisture. So you just take your index cards and you can file different categories. Like I was using colored index cards, it's kind of like dividers and stuff like that. Archived hipster PDA notes dated. So look at that, look at all that stuff there. So this was another one of the ways of doing a reusable notebook but not nearly as neat as the ACO prong fastener method, I think. But I also had a slightly larger size using two rings, and this was a concept for a sci-fi movie that I was working on, a storyboard idea, and this was bound in ring binders with a two-hole punch. 
Well, as usual, I am indebted to my friend Ted Monk for coming up with another great idea, in this case using these ACO prong fasteners as a binding system for everyday carry notebooks that can be opened back up and reconfigured, and it's just a great idea. You know, one of these binders will last probably a long time because you're going to reuse the same fastener system over and over again. But you got to buy them in boxes of 50, <laughs> so there is that. I haven't really found smaller quantities online. Maybe there are smaller quantities. But anyway, so in the meantime, maybe you guys are interested in making your own reconfigurable pocket carry notebooks using these prong fasteners. I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. Have you done this before? So I'd like to hear from you if you've had any previous experience making your own custom bindings with these prong fasteners. And as always, stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.